Welcome to the Friday Power Lunch, a weekly show amplifying the voices of the Virginia grassroots. Each week, we provide engaging conversations about politics, culture, and women making change. Produced by the unstoppable women of Network Nova, our motto is, when we vote, we win. The Friday Power Lunch is recorded before a live Zoom audience. Follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and show us some love and become a sponsor through Patreon. The Friday Power Lunch, badass women getting things done. So let's get it rocking. I'm Catherine White, your host, bringing you the guests, the issues, and the actions, amplifying the voice of the grassroots to get things done and to make politics fun. So I'm so glad you're all here. And I, I see some people that are here in the room that are actually staying at the hotel. And it's great. I see Vivian Watts is here. Thank you, Vivian, joining all the way up from uh, Northern Virginia. So it's great to see all the friends. So what I'd like to do is bring up the show messenger, uh, Fennell Norton, to talk about today's theme, All In for Hampton Roads, because we got ourselves quite a show, don't we, Fennell? We have got quite a show. I am so excited because you know that it's all about enthusiasm. That's what wins elections. And we have enough is issues. We have enough challenges that we are enthusiastic about this. So we got to win this. We got to win it. And we have quite a lineup to talk about all the aspects of why we're down here in Hampton Roads. Um, you know, we have badass activists are going to talk to us about, you know, what they see on the ground, what their life experiences that have brought them here, and obviously why they're badass, as we know that. It's Susan Potter, Susan Kaufman, and Heidi Dragna from our own team who live down here, who are really going to talk about that. I'm so excited to talk to them, right? Yeah, I, I can't wait to hear from them. Robin asked me this morning, what, 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 what did I think about when I thought about the summit? And what I said is, I'm just excited and I get motivated and inspired when I hear from leaders like that. So I can't wait to hear what they have to say so that they can share and inspire everybody else. Yeah, usually we bring people up. We have such a list of people today. We're just going to go all in, going to talk. We're going to go down the line and we have such good segments because then we're going to talk about committees because there's a backbone of some of this comes from the Democratic Party, all the committees down here do so much around the elections and we really rely on them to to make sure the precincts are all straight things are going on so we have maurice hawkins here the vp of precincts and elections along with michael fagans uh, uh their first time meeting michael we're really excited uh vice chair of operations and a candidate in hg 97 and mm -hmm. susan nippen secretary who's hip by the way, um, secretary, and she's also a candidate for 96. So that segment is gonna be awesome. Yeah, uh, that's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to talk about the issues. That's gonna be pretty fantastic. I got, um, I, I've got, um, um, uh, I'm losing all my tra train of thought here, but I've got, <laughs> okay. Popper, I've, got I've got Susan, I've got myself yeah. to some issues and so I'm really excited about that because that's what's going to bring people out is it has to be things that you care about that's Kelly Fowler by the way well, but it has to be things that you care about so that's right. why I'm going to be excited about that segment that's going to be good because we'll have Susan another Susan we have like it's a Susan show we have Susan Potter Susan Kaufman Susan Hippen Susan Loesberg for Moms to Ban Action but you know what we don't have one Karen on the show which is really good so how about that but That's Kelly Fowler's here welcome Kelly let's bring Kelly up for a second can we just spotlight her real quick I want to say hi to Kelly and uh I haven't seen her in so long hi Kelly we I'm so excited we'll be going down in your neck of the woods how are things going um, I mean, we're, we've kept it together because of the grassroots. I mean, that's all I can say. If you follow me in general, I, you know, I tell it like it is. And in general, those of us doing the work are the reason that we are making progress. So these kind of things like amp me up and excite me because I know it just multiplies us because remember in 2016, when we all yeah. kind of found each other and found our positions cool. and we're all kind of settling in, it's just amazing to see where we've gotten and, and what we can do. So. I appreciate that because you are, you know, I remember when you were running and you needed money and um, 
you know, we sent money down a couple thousand, but I mean, we put it in, we put it in some bags and we tied it up and we sent it down here, but we really, that's what the power of the grass roots were. You said, I, I, I need money to stay in this game. And we sent it down there and here you are. And now you've been down there since now we didn't do redistricting. So we're sorry you're suffering under that, but this is the power of what we were able to do for each other and for the candidates. So awesome. Okay, great. But I just want to say special hi. We'll see you in the third segment. So hang in there with us. And I don't, and yeah, with Nadarius. And did, did Nadarius come in yet? Yeah, good. All right. So let's just get rules. Let's get to the program. I'm so excited down here again. Um, Virginia Beach is just really moving and rocking and we'll be at the shack tonight. And I'm excited about that. At, at six o'clock. So if you're down in Virginia Beach and you're listening on Facebook, come down and hang out with us. But if you're in the room today, let's talk about the rules of the road. Do Use the chat, have a lot of fun. If you get nasty, the monster kicks you out, just like a good bar down here on the Virginia Beach. We do have rules. And so uh, we appreciate you all talking and chatting. We hope you do that and share what you, what's on your mind. And then after chat today, special alert, after chat's going to be just really short, 10 minutes to make sure if there's any questions that we can answer them for you before we all have to run out the door to go set up the, for the event. So stick around if you have a question. And then also support the show, be, it, be a patron. Why not? Send us a few dollars. This really helps us do our show. Thank you very much for our patrons in the room. Don't you love our backgrounds? The mermaids are awesome. And let's uh, do, we'll get to, let's go to our grassroots specialist, the head of the coalition, Louisa Borowski, who's up there in Northern Virginia. We're missing you, Louisa. I know, I know. I was down there canvassing earlier this summer and so, and it was so much fun and Finale and I were knocking doors together. And so I am sad. I can't be there this weekend, but I know you guys are going to rock it and bring all of the energy. So I'm excited for you and looking forward to hearing all about it. Yeah. Uh, so a couple things just to highlight from the coalition's perspective, obviously we all know that it is almost time for early voting. And so we are going to be pushing out social media graphics. So if you are on the list for the coalition or you're getting the Tuesday tidbits, please check them out next week because there will be information on how to share those graphics. But in addition to the graphics, we need you to look up the information for where to early vote in your district. It's usually the same place every year, but we need to make sure that we're sharing that information because right now it is not centralized on any, any location on the web anywhere. We looked yesterday. So what we need you to do is figure out your own location and share it with those social media graphics. That way people will know, okay, great. I can go to the courthouse or I can go to, you know, the, the county, um, you know, office or whatever it is for that early voting up until October. So, however, if people are interested, the best place to send people for now, I'm putting it in the chat, is to the coalition's website. Dennis, who is fantastic, has put the major locations and links to each of their um, websites so you can find out that early voting information. Hopefully soon, IWillVote.com will be updated, and that will be the one place we can send everyone. But right now, it is still only focused on voter registration, not about early voting. I've contacted DPVA to get an update on when that is going to be up and running. So just make sure you check those emails next week because we want to get people to the polls early. So the next thing, oh, the last thing about early voting is, as I mentioned last week, we want to do take your girlfriends to vote. If you're a guy, take your girlfriends to vote too, take your guy friends, but take some photos, make it fun. And we want this to be a celebration about voting and we really don't do that. So find a way to make this like a fun engagement with your friends, community, et cetera. And of course, post on Facebook so or social media so people can see it and get involved too. I'm gonna to share just two calls to action quickly. Um, the first one is from a campaign for a family-friendly economy. They are trying to message around some of the great work that's been done federally to help remind people why it matters that we're voting in these congressional elections. So they are looking for stories of people who've been impacted positively by the Inflation Reduction Act or the American Rescue Plan. So for example, it could be someone 
who um, out-of-pocket prescription drug costs have now been capped at $2,000 a year. That's under the Inflation Reduction Act. Could be people who are getting insulin, that's going to be capped at $35 a month. It could be people who have lower premiums in the marketplace, um, the health marketplace, um, because of the Inflation Reduction Act subsidies, or it could be people who are getting subsidized childcare thanks to the American Rescue Plan. Those are just some examples. So I will put in the chat the link for Christina, who works at the Campaign for a Family-Friendly Economy. If you have a story or you know someone who has a story, this is the time to get those stories out there. As Fanal mentioned, we have some really good messaging that we can get out and get in front of voters. We've got stuff passed. We're getting things done. This is the momentum that we need. So if you have a story, please share it. And then lastly, we're looking for people to help drive people to the polls to vote. There will be some people driving as early as um, a couple of weeks before the election because there will be more satellite offices open for early voting. So I will put the link in the chat for Rideshare to vote. Please, especially those of you in the Virginia Beach area, we heard from Rideshare to vote that last year there were more people who needed rides to the polls than had ride than we had rides available. So since we're thinking about Virginia Beach right now, I'm putting that link in the chat, share it and get more people to sign up to be drivers. And that's it, Catherine. Well, I'm just, you know, focusing on everything you're talking about. It's pretty exciting, um, especially these uh, activities around going out to vote. And we have all this opportunity with early vote. And I think it's really fun. I love the hashtag, you know, uh, bring bring your girlfriends to vote or just have these parties. It'd be great to have like wine parties around this or just nights out and everybody go to the polls. And we have that Sunday Halloween poll, correct? So that's the Sunday, some Sunday's opening. So everybody in the room, it'd be great to think about these creative ways to get people out to vote. And yeah, so super, super, super duper. And we, we miss you and thank you for reporting in. Okay. And we will be um, back home, right? When we're done with this summit, we're gonna go now, finally, we will really start getting out knocking doors. And I have to say that one thing when we heard about Elaine Luria's race, that came clear to us from people in power from straight from the people in the house is that her seat is really pin it's this it's rests on democracy it's really hard that's amazing to even think that your voice your vote you're going out here knocking doors is going to determine our future that's pretty crazy but it's true and maurice hawkins will talk about that later what they're doing down here but it really is quite simple knock doors we win how about that? All right, so let's talk to some of these badasses that are down here in Hampton Roads. Um, maybe it's something in the water, Susan Potter. Maybe it's the way that in Virginia Beach, Susan Kaufman. Oh, good, Heidi. Heidi broke up the Susan. There's that sentence. <laughs> Heidi, Susan, Susan. So look, this is really important. I think one sometimes. We think we have to talk to politicians and elected and all people, but you are the folks on the ground and looking at your perspective is really important. So I want to open it up. I'm going to go to Susan Kaufman just to get it started, because I know we can talk all day uh, for sure. And I love what you said to me when we were talking about the issues and how passionate you were about what's going on you know, in our country. You said, every hashtag has run through my life. I mean, that should be on Absolutely. a team. Absolutely everyone. My father's father was shot and killed when my dad was six years old by his own friends with his own gun. Mm. Um, I, my first um, abortion, my only abortion scare that I thought I would need an abortion um, when I thought I was pregnant and I was 12 years old. That's not consent. You go through my brother is profoundly handicapped. I have, I have talked about it this morning. Three legal abortions in my family preserved the lives or made possible the lives of 12 members of my family. I mean, right. I mean, you start with that. Yes, that, um, that just made me, you, you just get. I, and I just had a friend lose right. a grandson to gun violence again. Right. So, yeah, so down, you know, so in, in the sense of this concept, the, the hashtag running for your life, Heidi, what do you have comment on that for you? And as a, a mom, you're a veteran also, uh, you know, young children, when you're looking at from your perspective of what's going on, um, what, do you, how, what are your feelings on this? Well, 
this probably the same as any parent sending their children to school. You worry about, are they going to make it home that day? But I think another aspect that a lot of times we forget that um, to, to include is the psychological trauma that we're putting on our children by putting them through these drills. Yep. Yes. And the amount of money that the gun industry is making off of selling the protective backpacks and the shields, and now they want to put these like gun lockers or something in schools. So that way, when the police do show up, they have weapons already or something like that. Or <laughs> there was another one I saw where it was like a, a um, Kevlar type of locker that the kids could climb into. Like, what are we doing to our babies? It's insane yeah. to me. It, no, I mean, I think it's, and I, you know, so I, I love, I'll go over to Susan Potter and just go around and just it, your your feelings. Now a grandma, Susan. Yeah, I have um, yeah. four grandkids and one due in November. Um, so yeah, I, I really thought about a bulletproof backpack for the two that went to kindergarten this year and I, I didn't do it and I hope I don't ever regret it. Um, I feel like in Virginia Beach, you said democracy is on the ballot. That's true at the local level here. We are testing out a correction of what I consider historic injust injustice, which is our district voting system. It was originally at large. Um, our population of folks who are non-white and non-Hispanic is 40.2% right now. Mm -hmm. And the 59.8% can negate them if you have an all large system, a court corrected that. We're still in the middle of getting that all sorted out, but this is our first experiment with the system that the court imposed, which certain white old Republicans are trying to make go away. And um, so what that means- right. Not just Republicans, I heard someone who's in office today speak about how they would be fine if we I, had- we, we had someone, voting. we had one elected official say that at the Democratic committee meeting on Monday. And, I would say she was shouted down, but, but well, basically- This was a gentleman, so this is right, not- right. Yeah. So there's a couple of them. I love But this. basically, I, for example, I live in Kempsville. Um, I had a very good city council member named Dr. Amelia Ross Hammond, who is black um, and was a, I think she's a retired Norfolk State University professor. Mm -hmm. And she did a great job. And she was elected by the people of, of Kempsville Right. And when she came up for re-election, everybody in Kempsville voted for her. She won Kempsville, but she lost other areas of the city. I don't feel like nothing personal to anybody that lives there. I don't feel like people in Great Neck or North Beach or Pungo who live very different lives than we do in Kempsville right. should be choosing my city council representative. From, 19, not, from 1966 to 2018, 52 years under the old system, exactly five people, five right. black people have been elected to city council. One of them was Dr. Ross Hammond. Another was right. my neighbor, Louisa Strayhorn. So we are testing out this new system. So that's, that's good. So what I, what I love you bring to the table always, Susan, is the elections. And um, I think that is what we talk about voting and access is just so important. And, and we see this all over the country with the attack on voting rights and what they're trying to do. So what you've always stressed to us is making sure we're in there, watch, you know, from poll watching, participating and all that. So I'd like to go around again, uh, just to talk to you all about what, you know, v Virginia Beach and like what makes this place just tick. You know, we have a little joke. Uh, we always say like, it's a hot, you know, it's a hot mess down in Virginia Beach. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, is that I don't mean that negatively. What I mean, it's hot and, you know, like, but there's a lot going on. And somebody said to me, what do you mean by that? I go, well, there's a lot of insurrectionists that kind of birthed out of here and we're mm -hmm. up at the Capitol. So when I talk about a hot mess, I mean, it's, it's just really, um, there's a lot of, there's some tension here with a lot of this, uh, what's going on. So Susan, let's start again. Talk about that. Like, you know, you're an activist. We consider you're always working in this, um, you know, space to, you're motivated by issues. Like you said, you're passionate about it, but in the sense of, of what you see going on in Virginia beach, um, is it any different? I mean, what what is your perspective on like this upcoming election? You know, what we should be mindful of when we know what's been happening in Virginia Beach and the threats of some of this violence um, going well, on. Let me let me start. My 
my dad was from Norfolk. We moved back from, I was born on Long Island and my, I was five years old. The little boys in the neighborhood were thrilled that they had two Yankees so they could play Civil War. <laughs> that, for them, yeah, I have an older sister and, you know, there's a lot of Scottish, Scottish and German blood, trust me. Yeah. Uh, South still lost. <laughs> so those oh, little boys funny. didn't know what they were getting into. So um, a little history lesson. Little history lesson. But that that was 1968. That undercurrent. Mm-hmm. My my dad integrated the first the psychology department of Oldham University. Mm-hmm. Those racial tensions and in Norfolk and everywhere I've lived in the Hampton Roads area, there has always been that undercurrent. And I've had so many times at had, I mean, it's just pervasive and people do not understand. You can be in those privileged places that are white and hear this stuff and be, sh- and when you question them, they're like, um, honey, you just don't understand. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I do. <laughs> so being an activist, giving money to, um, the moment I saw women candidates, I've been active with Emily's list, giving money to black candidates the moment they started showing up. And I was like, yep, we've got to get the diversity. And I, I learned this, you know, from the cradle as diversity matters. You cannot have democracy unless everyone has a seat at the table and everyone has a voice. Right. Well, the good. And so Heidi, in the sense of a veteran's perspective, uh, I know you'll be maybe talking about that later. So maybe we'll save that. But just in general for this, what you, what some takeaway points are for this upcoming election that are on your mind or some thoughts on this? Well, from a, a veteran and a military family's perspective, the entire area of Hampton Roads is extremely diverse because of the military. We've come from all over the place. I grew up in Southern California and Arizona, and my husband is from Central Florida. And we know people from all over the country that have ended up here. And it's it's made it such a beautiful place because you have diversity and not everybody is the same. It's not like a robot. So you have to keep in mind that a lot of people come here and end up retiring here because of the military. <clears throat> and it's that it's such a mixed bag here that you're not going to be able to find that perfect middle of the road candidate but Elaine Luria is like the closest you're going to get she has worked with so many people across the aisle she's had several bipartisan bills pass through the house with almost no no votes that has benefited the military and Um, Right now, the ads that we're seeing on TV against her are saying quite the opposite, how she's too liberal after (laughs) she's getting these these bills passed that are benefiting not only the Hampton Roads military, but the entire military, especially women in the military, like um, nursing, nursing parents in the VA, there's um, more mental health for military members that end up on ships because it's a different life and it's a shock to some people's system and they can't always handle it or if they have personal things going on back home being in the military is very unique and she sees that after being in for 20 years she has worked with people like that so she knows that our unique needs whereas Jen Kiggins was in for maybe 10 years and she is a nurse practitioner, but she also sides with the MAGA Republicans against any kind of COVID mitigation type of stuff. And I just find right. that as very um, counterintuitive, you know? Yeah, no, I know. It's it's interesting. And we were talking about this yesterday, how, you know, when we first came down here and we talked Kelly Fowler running and we talked to Kelly and all the candidates that came up and it was so excited about the diversity, all the women that were running and all the wins that we had. And the Republicans are like, oh, we need to do this too. So they, it feels like they just found these people mm-hmm. and put them they in there. Here's, them. Them. here's a Latino, here's somebody, you know. That's exactly what they did. Filipino, yep. let's just put them around and they stick them in there. But this is where we have to adjust. Just for also remember in Chesapeake is where FBI, the FBI Norfolk office is. And so they've been uh, watching yeah. these guys. These are 
the FBI down here told Washington before January 6th that it was coming. And they were- They, they heard the chatter. Well, and I think what we need to do is adjust to this as well. When we talk about candidates and, you know, we want, you know, what, like I've just started to realize this, we need to talk about our values and our issues because you can put up two women or uh, mm -hmm. Fennell, when, Fennell, we were talking about this yesterday that's that Mar Martha Mugler lost mm -hmm. to uh, a Republican who was, a, you know, was a district that was African-American. They ran a person of color and he won, he beat Martha. And we talked about the importance of how we need to really, um, you know, pay attention to the, the what's going on and how we talk about it and get involved. But I digress as usual. To back to Susan Potter, Love, Susan, why don't you just close us out here about, you know, just about us coming down. We're well, not about us coming by, but what you really are going to be doing for this election coming up. What really is your laser focused on it's, to make sure we win this damn thing? We have a new system which is going to help and cause confusion. We have an excellent school board majority. We need to translate into that into a city council majority. And we need to bring Elaine Luria back and home because she is absolutely the best person for the unique aspects of this district. And our congressional majority depends on her. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I'm so glad, I'm so excited that we're down here. We'll see you guys tonight. In fact, you know, <clears throat> What a badass is like to do, but go out and uh, have a little fun. And tonight, I want to talk about Friday while you guys are here with me. I don't know if we have a slide for Friday. Do we want to show it along or just want to bring up the slide, Robin? So if you're down at Virginia Beach, um, where we will be heading tonight at six o'clock to the shack. There's a little gray on the screen, Robin. And it's it's uh, the shack is right on ocean, right on the, the what, Atlantic. It's really fun. We have the fire pit area rented. We're going to hang out and, and really just have fun building this community together. So we hope you show up at 6 to 8.30. We have Senator McClellan will be coming. Nadarius is coming tonight to, to talk and kick things off. And um, we hope that you will just come out and just support this because really, like we said, all roads lead to Hampton. It really is working coalition. Who better to not to talk about our next segment is going into this committee work, which is, I say, it's a mystery to me. These, it's new to me as an activist, uh, moving on from what it looks like to be sort of on the outside of committee work and some people that are also doing both, but we have Michael Fagans here. Thank you, Michael. And also a candidate and then Maurice Hawkins, VP of elections. Uh, precincts and elections, and Susan Hippen, secretary and candidate in 96, and also a fan of the show. Sorry, we'll get it straight. It's not that Susan, but I know we're getting the Susan. Do you want to bring up all the Susans too, or do we got the right Susan? Hold on. <laughs> Maurice is here. VP precincts and elections, Michael Fagan's here. Okay, and Susan Hippen. Do we keep Susan? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of Susan. Okay, Maurice, you look like you're at the controls over there, buddy. Oh, well, I'm here. I'm here to do my part. I'll say that. <laughs> well, I'm excited to meet Michael Fagan. So I just want to start. I was going to start with Maurice, but I want to say hello to you first. I want to, uh, you're running. And I want to say that it's so important that you are running and other people are stepping up now because What's been said to us is it's really important for Elaine to, to win. If more people just sign up to be in those districts, it just adds the amplification of that. So tell me a little bit about yourself as a candidate, and then we're going to talk about your committee work. And oh, also sure. Yeah. yeah for, for, first of all, thank y'all so much for being down here. Thank you for, for you know, wel welcome to Virginia Beach. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, Virginia Beach is home for me. It's it's uh, where I grew up in. Uh, and so I graduated from Tallwood High School uh, down here, Go Lions, uh, in 2001. And right, right after, right after I graduated, I listed in the Air Force. And so I, I traveled all around the world. Had a great career. Uh, I did 20 years, and so I just retired from the Air Force. Nice. Uh, while I was in the Air Force, I had a, a great opportunity to work for Senator Mark Warner uh, mm -hmm. to become the first enlisted uh, uh, Air Force intern. Uh, so I got to come down here to Norfolk, got to work on constituent work. Uh, help write some speeches for him in DC, and that really kind of kick-started my uh, mm -hmm. my passion for getting involved in, in in community service and 
and, and public service. And so I retired last year uh, and I, I ran to, uh, to be a part of the, the committee. Uh, but before, you know, before I, I ran, I, we were working to uh, help out uh, uh, Delegate Alex Askew. We, uh, we oh, you know, unfortunately yeah. did not win last year. It's just by a few votes. And we, we see how much, you know, from Martha Muggler to uh, Alex, that how much those few votes can, can can help out with. So when redistricting came up and I saw that the lines were, were redrawn, Alex actually lives down the street from me. Uh, I live in another district uh, now, so in the 97th district. So uh, I, I I decided that uh, right now is the best time for me to utilize my services uh, uh, from 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 my passion to, of being yeah. in the military, of being a, being a small business owner, and putting putting my foot forward and, and running for uh, House District 97 in Virginia Beach. Yeah, I'm so excited, and you're so right when you said about that. So many votes, so just we're we lost seats we shouldn't have. There's just by little bitty since we, and and we know that we it really makes a difference when you start mobilizing early, getting on those doors early, and so I think we definitely all does on the same page here and I can't wait to talk to Maurice, but I wanna give Susan the same opportunity because you are also a candidate. What I love about, like Heidi said, Virginia Beach, so many people that are in public service, serving our country, thank you very much. Um, it's just so awesome. And, and Michael, your stuff is so good. I was looking at your your Twitter. It's um, you know just just awesome that they have you down here and we're, we're excited about that. But Susan, also veteran running, uh, and talk about 96. Talk, and we'll, I want to make sure we get that spotlight, and then we're going to talk about your committee work. So for those of us who served more than 20 years, we have a running joke because I started out in the Air Force, but they breached my contract, so I quit. So I have a running joke with Mike and Maurice, and, and uh, we Air work power. together every day, every day. It's, it's, uh, it's okay. Retired, we, maybe. We, we, we love our squids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm retired Navy Master Chief. Uh, I was one of three female Master Chiefs at Oceana when I retired. I was the only woman of color. So everyone at Oceana knew who I was. They knew who the Black Master Chief was. Uh, you know, it, it took them a while to figure out that I was retired at medical because I was just known. Um, after I retired, um, I decided to get active politically but I also had my nephew move down here. So I helped him raise his boys and I've been active uh, with the schools. I've been active with, uh, with tax preparation, been active just all over the place, uh, church, the whole nine yards. And uh, I've, I've definitely been in and out of city council meetings, school board meetings, because we, we have got to have a voice. We have got to have a voice. Like Susan Potter said, you know, there, there's more than one Virginia Beach here, okay? Mm -hmm. um, the, the area that I'm running in is a majority minority district. It's one of two in Virginia Beach. And um, it's kidney shaped. Yeah, it's kid, there she is. See, there's Heidi showing you, it's kidney shaped. <laughs> uh, I call it a townhouse district. And um, Kelly was good enough to surrender 12 of her precincts from her old district so that I had a good place to run. Uh, I've supported Kelly. I've been a, a legislative assistant for Kelly. Mm. Um, I've also knocked probably as many doors as Kelly for Kelly. Uh, and, and I continue to do the same. Um, you know, the fact that I'm retired uh, Navy Master Chief as a woman makes a lot of difference. Heidi is exactly right. Shipboard life is very, very different. And mm -hmm. it gives you a lot of perspectives. And I also wanna acknowledge that um, Michael's mother lives in my district and I'll be happy to have her vote and his dad's vote too. <laughs> yeah, there you, you, you go. My, my, you, you've got my family's vote, no worries. There, there, you, there you go. It's, <laughs> it's, you know, Virginia Beach is a very unique place. Uh, I, I grew up in Cleveland, okay, and in oh, Philadelphia. I'm from so, Youngstown. I knew that too. Uh -huh. Go Browns. Go uh, Browns. You know, it's a very different place. It's like a suburban area to me. Yes. Um, but it has city problems. And we've got to get people up in the General Assembly that understand these problems. Uh, just like Susan Kaufman, I too have lived a lot of these hashtags. Um, my, my two great nephews' mother was shot four times by an ex-boyfriend the Friday before the 19 year old's graduation. And I'm thinking, oh, sweet Jesus, please don't make me have to take these boys to their mother's funeral. Uh, thank God she's recovered. She's gotten back to work. 
Uh, but you know, this is this is where we are. Um, yeah. Abortion and 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 childbirths have you know been in my family, uh, yeah. along with uh, being stopped for being the wrong color where I am, mm -hmm. uh, and and that includes Virginia Beach, that includes Philadelphia, that includes the suburbs of Philadelphia. You know, all of these things we've lived all of these things, uh, domestic abuse, um, uh, you know, alcoholism right. in the family. These are not just things that are that are lines for me these are things that i have lived so i understand and, and i want people to know that i'm here for them and that's the reason why i run uh yeah. it's it's it, it's it. not for any any you know uh no, name we know because, that yeah because i'm a badass i'm a master chief that, so <laughs> that's you right you don't, need, no to, you don't that. need to prove yourself there and we were if and i were talking last night as we we're packing all the bags for people checking in the hotel it was a lot of fun we talked about you know, running for office is not like you're some glory thing when you really have to come in and there's not a lot of support sometimes. And there's like you, there's really a lot to learn. It's, it's not something, there's a lot of work to that. So we appreciate what you guys are doing. And I know you're in good hands because I, this committee is pretty awesome. I'm looking at the Virginia beach committee, pretty badass. So Maurice and I uh, have met, he knows that we've come down here, knocked doors, and then um, now this year, it's kind of fun. We've coordinated somewhat about this, the Women's Summit. And then we got to talking the other day. Let's talk about Maurice with this more down to the nuts and bolts of what we're going to do um, to energize, excite voters, like what, and, and what you're doing or your vision is for the Democratic Party down here. Like we talked about coalition building and looking at maybe organizing in a new, fresh way that's really going to energize the party in some ways. Mm -hmm. well, uh, thank you, Catherine, for introducing me to that. I, and I, it's also an honor to be on the call with uh, my first vice chair, Michael Fagans of the Virginia's Democratic Committee, uh, my secretary, uh, Susan Hippen of the Virginia's Democratic Committee. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to our district six chair, Susan Lowsberg, who will be giving a presentation later on on behalf of Moms the Man. I uh, also want to give a shout out to Susan Potter, our voter protection uh, chair. For the Virginia Beach Democratic Committee, uh, she does a lot of work here. Um, also, want to give a shout out to Susan Kaufman and Heidi Dragnaff, who always, always are reliable volunteer leaders. Whether it's working early voting, knocking doors, making phone calls, hosting meet and greets, uh, they do all of it all the time. And there's other Democrats in front of Virginia Beach Democratic Committee who do great work as well. Also, our immediate past chair Kelly Fowler, who's also a member of the General Assembly. Uh, I also think, I think uh, Delegate Fowler in particular, she kind of represents what the democratic political atmosphere is like in Virginia Beach. For mm -hmm. those who don't remember, you know, Delegate Fowler was a part of that leading edge of Democrats along with uh, former Delegate Cheryl Turpin that really put that wound on the Republican Party in Virginia Beach and really highlighted the ability of Democrats to win in Virginia Beach. And based off the success of candidates like Delegate Fowler, uh, Delegate Cheryl Turpin in 2019, we were able to flip the composition of the Virginia De uh, House of Delegates from red to blue, uh, where we had uh, Delegate Nancy Guy and Delegate Alex Askew to join Delegate Fowler in the General Assembly. So I say that to say that Virginia Beach overall is the true battleground municipality in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, my catchphrase moving forward is, so goes Virginia Beach, so goes Virginia. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'll give you an example. In 2020, uh, when um, Joe Biden won the city of Virginia Beach, he won the Commonwealth of Virginia and became president of the United States. Conversely, when Glenn Youngkin won the city of Virginia Beach, last year, he became the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, you know, and, and this was after, you know, many years of Democrats dominating the governor's mansion, you know, we saw, you know, tremendous gains both in the House and the Senate, and now we're, you know, we've lost the governor's mansion, we're in the minority in the General Assembly, and we're holding on to a, a, a wing and a prayer in the Senate. So I say all this to say that having the Women's Summit here hosted by Network Nova is so important because it really highlights the vital importance of winning the city of Virginia Beach and waging this guerrilla warfare, trench warfare with a very regressive, very bombastic, very 
social disruptive uh, MAGA Republican culture in the city of Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. Like MAGA reigns supreme in Virginia Beach. You have some country club Republicans, but they are pale in comparison to the MAGA Republicans that are down here. The And really the line of demarcation with the MAGA Republicans and where they're strongest is on our school board. The most extreme voices, the most extreme personalities, the most disruptive personalities in our city are on the school board, led by a woman by the name of Vicki Manning. If you Google her, if you go on YouTube, you will see some- Let's the, Google her right now. <laughs> the, she says some of the most vile and just outright racist commentary on school board. She's not on the school board to benefit children. She's on the school board to push a culture war, a culture, a culture war agenda in the city of Virginia Beach. So these are the kind of individuals that we're dealing with. So I view myself as a war fighting Democrat because we are at war with these individuals because they want to take our country backwards. We saw what they did on January 6th. We talked about at the beginning of this show that there are these insurrectionists who live among us in the city of Virginia Beach. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, what's going on in regards to Roe v. Wade. We're, we're talking about what's going on as far as redistricting and minority representation and having fair representation. So all these issues that are taking place all across the United States of America are concentrated in this city. So that's why, you know, I had a conversation with Catherine earlier that it is vital that both the Democratic Party of Virginia, grassroots organizations, anybody that has a vested interest in seeing a fairer, more inclusive, a more just Virginia um, right. needs to be in Virginia Beach. And that's why I'm so happy to see that we have candidates stepping up like uh, uh, Michael Fagans and Susan Hippen yeah, and so uh, others, you know, getting their ducks in a row this year so they can run formidable campaigns in 2023 so they can win uh, win these elections and take back the majority in the houses of House of uh, right. Delegates. Um, it's so important. Yeah. So thank you. And we'll we'll wrap up on that note because I know we have a lot to get to. But you just said so such powerful things, and we're recording this. So I'm glad to have it because it is true. The work we do now will help these candidates right here. And so it's so it's we're knocking doors. Everybody, what we're pushing this weekend is we don't care who you are, elected, you candidates, we want you on the doors with us. And then once you go on those doors, it's going to benefit 2023. There's no doubt in my mind, Maurice. So we're excited to work with you this weekend yeah. to uh, hit those doors with you and with your guidance of what you know what's going on. So, Catherine, just one final point, because yeah, uh, I, I did not talk about you know we, we did a lot of talk about 2023, but we got to talk about 2022 with Congresswoman Elaine Loria. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, we get it. Um, <laughs> and, and the and the one thing that I want to catalyze, like so, when the, her race started it was a lean r race mm -hmm. based off the polling the race is statistically tied yes right but what that means is that we can win this race if we do what we need to do on the doors yes okay it's all about the doors okay so it, we're so yes. happy so many assets are coming in from across the commonwealth to help us here in virginia beach we thank you so much and not only is it going to benefit elaine Laurie, is going to benefit our city council candidates and yes. it's and it's going to benefit Maurice, our, this is going to can, I, can I chime in real quick? Down here, we have a saying, Republicans, you know, Democrats fall in love, Republicans fall in line. <laughs> a lot of the races we lost last year were because Rep Democrats stayed home. A handful of Democrats stayed home and we lost several races. Well, you know what? I let, hold that thought because I know we can talk all day about what the hell happened. But I say to you that Maurice is spot on this year spot on, it's all about doors. And that's what we learned last year, getting yes. voters out, energizing them. And like you said, Susan, not leaving any voter behind because that's what happened last year. We didn't contact them, we left them behind. And your Virginia Beach is the place and the power where it's gonna happen. And I love what you said about how, let me just say that um, we had a guest on um, Rachel Bittekoffer, who's a, an analyst, political analyst, who told us they're coming through Hampton Roads, they're coming through Newport News, and she was warning back then, and people weren't listening. Uh, 
And that's exactly what they did. So thank you. Stay in the room because we're going to keep talking about this. You guys are bringing up such great things. I just don't want to uh, take up other people's time because Finel Norton's up next. Thank you all. Thank you. Stick in the room. Because that's right. Yes, yeah, stick in the room. Don't go anywhere. Okay, for now. Yay. Because geez, we know we this is we could talk. That's why we're down here. This is great. You're yeah. asking great knowledgeable people that are doing this work and, uh, and need to help us understand. So I'm gonna hand it right over to you. Let's bring Nadarius Clark up. Uh oh, let's hold, get... hold on. We've got um, a wonderful segment oh. of issues on the ballot. You're That's too far ahead, Catherine. Oh, so oh, gosh, you know what? My screen, my screen just went right past issues on the ballot. I'm so All sorry. All right, no. so, so yeah, we're, bringing, we're bringing back Heidi and we're bringing up Susan and we're bringing up Kelly. So you guys, come on, join me on, uh, join me on the screen. Yeah, we're gonna have to condense that one because I think we talked a lot about that stuff, but let's go. <laughs> We did, but we'll go really fast. But here, here's, I want to say to, to Maurice, you're right. So goes Virginia Beach, not only Virginia, but so goes the country. And so this is why this is so important in terms of enthusiasm. I want to give you guys a fact. In the 21 midterms since 1934, only two times has the president's party won the House and the Senate. Now, something usually dynamic happens to create that. And we have that right now in terms of our issues. We've got reproductive rights on the ballot. We've got um, uh, public safety and guns on the ballot. We've got veterans on the ballot. We've got voting rights on the ballot. We've got all of these really important issues on the ballot, which is enthusiasm, which is anger, which is all of the things that we need. And so I wanna talk about why that's so important. And so the other Susan, Susan Kaufman was right. The reason that we lost was because we didn't come out. Everybody didn't come out. So I want you guys to talk about the issues that you care about the most and why it's gonna bring people to the polls. So Susan Lowesberg, why don't we start with you? Well, thank you for having me. Um, I just wanna say with the recent wave of mass shootings and the Supreme Court decision on Roe v. Wade, reproductive rights and gun violence rank just below inflation and stabilizing the economy as the leading issue for voters. So on an average day, and I have to say this, 110 people are shot and killed in this country and over 200 are injured. Firearms are the leading cause of death for our children and our teens. And this includes homicides, suicides, unintentional shootings, and bystander shootings. So our children are literally caught in the crosshairs. Um, younger millennials, and Generation um, Z kids have grown up with this entrenched with this trauma of mass shootings in their schools. They're having their reproductive rights taken away and they are fearful that they're even gonna get home alive. So um, they are now a voting age. So I think that we'll expect to see them at the polls in November. Um, and so, you know, what, what would you like me to talk about? I mean, for me, um, in, in our area right here, yes, Fanon? Yeah, I was going to say, you've already hit it. Uh, you said that yeah. uh, they, they come of voting age and that's yeah. it. And, and so that's what we talk about. And I think you talk about it with the passion that we need. This, this is the key, make no assumptions. Uh, I don't care if they're 18, 22, 36, we can't assume that anyone is, not, is coming to the polls. We must talk about it. We must give them the reason that they should be out there voting. So I'm going to move right on. Thank you so much, Susan. I'm going to move on to Kelly. So Kelly, let's chat. So what's going to bring people to the issue, to, to the polls? What's your, what's your issues that you're passionate about? Well, I mean, everything we've talked about so far, but I think what's really important is there are so many big issues that are on the ballot. Like when you, when you think about it, there's the gun violence issue, there's Roe versus Wade. And then there's, there's the other issue of LGBTQ gay marriage um, is, is on the ballot. If you think about it, it is in our, okay. So a lot of people don't know this, but Roe versus Wade, when it was overturned at the Supreme court level and sent back to the States, we're fine. Our laws, if we don't change anything, we'll stay the same, right? Like as we did in the Democrats did in 2019, 2021. Um, but for gay marriage, that's different because it's in our constitution already banning it. So we were in the middle of a two-year process to get rid of that language that says Section 15A marriage that only a union between one, one man and one woman may be a marriage valid. If they overturn it at the um, 
uh, at federal level, we immediately would be a ban because we already have the ban. So I think it's really important that the, that that you know it's it that's also on the ballot because we started a two year process. Um, all the people that voted for it, the Republicans killed it this year. I don't mean to get partisan, but that's how it went down in the House. So I I think that bring that up would be a really important issue also depending on who you're talking to yeah i think this i think that's really relevant it, not just that though also interracial marriage uh um contraceptives and not just that but we just recently uh, uh, banning abortion across the nation so it doesn't matter where you are so and, and it's and the issue around abortion is so big and so widespread that that's something we can all talk about and everybody has a story to tell is the hashtag in one way or another for just about everybody did you want and to I say about, something, Kelly? just one quick comment that we need to really talk about voting not as in there's one election day but as in we're kicking off voting we're starting to vote this is and don't wait till the last minute don't wait till the deadline if we really i know we don't have that messaging coming from the top but we could do it we could just make sure that people know i mean i'm thinking of having a cookout next weekend or somehow on a block party at the end of my block right like just trying to get people you know thinking about voting so just wanted to throw that out there I, i'm glad you did because that's that's really the key right so your neighbors your friends your family facebook amplifying the messages everywhere you can heidi go yes ma'am um i was going to talk about how the abortion rights affects the military active duty as well as family members um when you are in the military you are expected to be ready to deploy at a moment's notice if you become pregnant that takes you off of that list and they have to find you a replacement so taking abortion away if if virginia were to do away with it <clears throat> that would cause a readiness issue in our troops as well as um, any family members that may need abortion care you would have to travel and it's not covered under military insurance it's um you you if if we lost that in virginia you'd have to travel you got to pay for your stay somewhere you got to pay for the procedure you got to pay for gas and food and all of that so even if you are a man in the military and you have daughters or a wife and they need this care that sort of puts you in a bad position where either you can't go with them and they have to go alone or you're deployed so you can't be there and some complication arises. Um, and then with the sexual assault that happens in the military, a lot of times the women are stigmatized for it. You know, it's a very male predominant business and they will cover for each other or sweep it under the rug, tell you you're overreacting or, maybe you had too much to drink or it was miscommunication you know there's excuses that we've all heard especially as women we've heard these stories and then um if you become pregnant because of an assault what are you supposed to do that also goes towards readiness so if you get assaulted your command chooses to do nothing about it or sweep it under the rug and then you become pregnant you're going to be stigmatized even more because we already live in a society that victim blames. Um, and being on a ship, we saw multiple women come in, find out they were pregnant and immediately have to get processed back off the ship because you're not deployment ready. So then you have to find somebody else quick in a hurry to replace that spot or you go without. And it makes it extremely hard to have enough people to get the job done. And in the military, that's not what you want to see. You want to make sure everybody is there and fully staffed and competent. You don't want to be running at half staff trying to like fight a war, for example. So it really affects military families, active duty, a lot more than people realize. Um, one of the things I will never forget that I learned at my first duty station, I worked in the female wellness clinic for boot camp. One of the things the nurses would drill into us and the recruits was a baby was not issued to you in your sea bag and they would push birth control. So if we lose birth control, I mean, that there goes women in the military. Yeah, 
So I, I think I think that's pretty fantastic. We're about to move on, and, and here's what I would just say: you guys have like ten seconds, and I I'll see if Kelly comes back. But ten seconds. What's your one thing? What's your go-to to get someone to the polls? So can ten I seconds. say this is really since gun violence really is on the ballot with reproductive rights. Yeah. I want to say we have to look at it in three different levels. We have federal. We just passed the bipartisan, but we still have work to do on a state level. We won the majority back, you know, during the northern years, and we got a slew of really good gun bills um, passed, but we can't pass anything if we don't win back the House. Next year, we have to win back the House and keep the Senate. Senate's been doing a great job in safeguarding those gun violence um, legislation, the slew of them that we passed a couple of years ago. Local level, just what Marie and some of them were saying, we have a real big problem in our school board. They want to arm our teachers. They want to do some draconian measures with guns in our school board and in our schools. We've got, we, up, we have half our school board up in Virginia Beach in November. We need to vote. We need to identify who the, the good people are, get them in. Same thing with city council. We don't have the majority. We are a constitutional city here in Virginia Beach. That means our city council thinks that they can main, they can mandate what rule what laws are um, you know constitutional or not. So we need to keep voting in good people on city council. Please get out there and vote. Let's let's keep this gun sense majority going. Thank you, Susan. Heidi, ten seconds. When you're knocking on doors or making phone calls, look for those military insignia, stickers, plates, all of that, and touch on that. Use that and remind them that. Elaine Luria has done so much good for the military. It will really tip the scales just a little bit. Even if you don't convince them, you'll get them thinking and you can see those gears going because a lot of people don't follow politics as closely as we do. And we have to remember that. Perfect. And Kelly, last 10 seconds are yours. Um, I would say election. The, I mean, elections matter. And this is our one opportunity if you don't follow anything on of mine on social media, but I will echo Susan Potter says, we have this opportunity with districts in Virginia Beach, um, these 10 districts, if we get 10, six yeses to keep that system, we're great. We don't want to be all at large where an, a rich neighborhood chooses for the poorer areas, what districts. We tried to ban that through legislation and they're kind of finding their way around it. So it's essential that, you know, we just get people going to the, these elections and know that it matters and we can keep districts and keep it fair. So I would just say elections and democracy is on the ballot. I was going to say, democracy is on the ballot. Every single issue that you heard Heidi and Susan and Kelly talk about is democracy. That's what it is. All right, uh, Catherine, I know where are you? Uh, we're going to go right to Nadarius. Right to Nadarius. And I want to say, I love your little uh, dog with Kelly. So cute. And I love your idea of a barbecue. And get on with the hashtag, bring, the bring your girlfriends to vote. All right, Nadarius, good to see you. Hello. I'm hey, for now. Hey, Catherine. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Ooh. So I, I've, I've just lost Catherine, but that's okay. But Nadarius, you're going to talk about the long game and why it's so important for us to be focused on that. So this is a long game. We, you, you're in 23, but you, you, you were House of Delegates. You're one of the youngest members, and we got to keep on fighting. So what does the long game look like to you? Yeah, so the long game, first we have to understand that Hampton Roads is crucial for one, the nation and second for Virginia. We know that Hampton Roads holds the seat to democracy this year and next year for our nation this year and next year for the state of Virginia. So we have to make sure that we are talking about next year election now, that we are uh, making sure that we are registering young people to vote. We can pre-register people at 16 years old to uh, get out and vote. We have to make sure that this is Virginia. It's an election every year. People have to start understanding that. We cannot waver. We cannot, um, you know, we, we can't waver our support. We have to make sure that we get out here and vote for Elaine Loria and we support the candidates as well. It is so crucial because next year we have to take back the House. We have to make sure that we maintain the Senate on the state level, but we it starts by getting Elaine Loria in this year. We have to make sure we send that message this year that we are going to stand up and fight for democracy for our nation and then we're going to come back next year even stronger. We have to win back these seats in Virginia Beach. Uh, we have to make sure that we hold the line uh, for our, the seats that we already have. So we just have to make sure that we are getting the message through and know what's at stake because we have to vote like our rights depend on it because they do. 
Yes, they do. And you know, Darius, one of the things that I remember uh, vividly when I was running, it was a woman who said to me, I only see you all when you want my vote. And I don't see anyone after you've gotten my vote. And I think what that says and what it said to me is, is that uh, people want to see us all the time, engaging with them, talking with them, and not when it's just uh, asking for a vote, but being in the communities. And I see you guys out there all the time uh, with, with town halls and meetings and updating people. And that's not just for you to do, but it's for all of us to do as well, our, our democratic committees, to engage with our communities so that they know that we are there for them all the time. And then when it's time to vote, they can put it together and see what is going to be in their best interest, but also quite frankly now to your point is preserving democracy. So Nadarius, knocking on the doors, talk to us a little bit about how you did that so successfully and how it's gonna matter now. Yes, you know, knocking on the doors, I love to put my boots on and, and get out there on the doors is so crucial. That's how we, we make change happen and that's how we make sure we get the word out. We have to have boots on the ground. We have to get out to the doors and have these important conversations. And it's constant contact. Like you said, we have to make sure people understand, one, why we're out there, and two, how they can also help. So many times when we go out to doors, people say, oh, my God, no one ever comes to my door. This is the first time this happens. Th that can't be a constant thing. We have to make this a normal thing that, you you know, people are going to come talk to you and educate you uh, about the upcoming election. So many times there's so many doors and so many voters that go untouched and go unheard. And we have to realize every door counts, every Every vote counts. So we have to make sure that we are getting to every community uh, and get on these doors. So what would you say to Darius, to folks who uh, probably have never done canvassing before, have never knocked on doors before? So talk a little bit about that and also talk a little bit about how just everyday people can get engaged. Knocking on doors is where our focus is and what we want it. But how can everyday people make uh, something to do with uh, how we talk about elections uh, normal? Yes. So the easiest way, well, first, let's just talk about canvassing. I, I love canvassing. So that's how I actually got my start. I was a field organizer, and I became a regional organizer, and I've been working on campaigns after campaigns, just organizing, getting grassroots, and getting people riled up and excited about voting. And any anyone can do it. If you love your community, you have issues that you care about, you can be involved. Uh, you know, you can download an app now, you can take a walk list. There's so many different ways to go out there and canvas. You can do your own neighborhood if you want. If you just want a few streets around your block and you want to get some friends, you can go out there and canvas. The canvassing is made so easy now and even safe now with, uh, you know, with coming out of COVID. Uh, so many ways to make sure that you're protected while you're out there on the doors. But it's also just good to know when you have that good door and you get to that that voter and you know you made that difference and you know you got someone that's either, you know, registering to vote or voting for the first time. Or, and you know that you was that, that spark, that change that got them to the polls. That's just, you know, there's no other feeling like it. So we just have to do our part and hopefully Hopefully someone will see, you know, see the work that we're doing and say, I want to be part of that. I want to join that movement. I, I think that's awesome. One of the things that folks can do, if you're a little bit shy about uh, canvassing and knocking the door, you can drive people. So that makes it much easier when you have a driver who helps you get from one place to the other and they're there to pick you up down the way. And so there's all kinds of ways that you can participate in that canvassing process to make it easy. You can donate money so that there's snacks and food for folks to eat, cold water. So there's a bunch of different ways to engage, but you're right. This election is gonna come through Elaine Loria, uh, Spanberger and Wexton because they are the ones who were the bellwether in 2018 and we need every single boot on the ground to make that happen in 2022. Hi, Catherine. Hi, well, I will, let's just talk to Darius cause we're, and we're so excited we'll see you tonight. Yes. So, and it, when we're talking about all the activities, so I just want you to stay with us while we talk about the Women's Summit. We're down here, obviously, because we recognize being activists, how important it is down here. And meaning that if we, if we really shift the sands, Elaine takes office again, this is so important. Could you imagine this house being turned over I, I, to Republicans? I can't imagine, I didn't want to talk about it. Anyways, that's why we're here. So tonight we're going to see at the shack, It'll be so much fun. And then tomorrow we're going to be at the Museum of Contemporary Art. And that is at 830 in the morning. Uh, the door is open. 
And at 930 sharp, we're going to kick the damn stage off. Senator Lucas is going to be there. Senator Mamie Locke is going to be there. We have Delegate Jackie Glass, Delegate uh, Angel Angela uh, Williams Graves. We also have Senator McClellan. Um, and that's just the first part of that stage. Robin, do you want to pull up our Saturday, get people excited to see what what will be going on? And of course, candidates will be coming. I hope we get a group picture. That will be a lot of fun. Uh, let's pull it up. Okay, because I don't want to miss anybody. Um, and just remember that 9.30, we kick it off. And yeah, oh, Herb Jones, that's who I was missing. Herb Jones is going to be here for CD1 because that's really important. He has a new district too. That's bringing new excitement and that will bring new a new new voters in. And then we're going to kick off uh, at 10 o'clock about education under attack. This room has talked all about education today. And everybody is so correct with those city council school board members. We have Lisa Vargas speaking. She is the executive director of oh that I don't know what's going on. executive director of the library association. Patricia King, she's a school board member. Dr. King's going to be here. Uh, Susan, uh, sorry, Sharon Felton's going to be there. And then Judith Dunkerley, uh, she's going to talk about um, really the feminist perspective of what this work is like, how we get it done, and how we have to really resist this different kind of ways we resist together from how people used to sit around at quilting bees how we sit around doing postcarding, how we have parties to get people out. This is relationships. It's emotional. So it's awesome. And then we're going to go into 11 o'clock and Elaine's going to come on in. It's going to be so excited. We have Delegate Dan Helmer kicking off the stage. Elaine's going to be here probably a little early too to socialize. So get there for the coffee because she's going to be milling about, I'm sure. And then she'll take the stage. That will be awesome. And then we're going to be talking about how important the Latino vote is with Carla Bustulis. Um, Bustulis, I can't say her last name right now. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, so Catherine, this is, this, is, this is really awesome. And when I look at this list, I just get so excited. And so yeah. that's part of what this is all about is you get to hear these speakers, you get to hear these leaders, and then you go back and you're inspired and then you can yes. amplify the messages because that's what it's going to be about. You said relationships. It is talking oh, to your man. friends and your family and everyone so that they get excited too and bring their behind to the polls. Yes. And so let's just say, that let's, I'll stop doing the, you see all the beautiful faces they are going to be there and hopefully you'll be there. We have an advocacy fair that's, that's awesome and filled with about 24 vendors they're coming down. We're thankful, thankful for that. And then also the evening at Smart Mouth, we kick it off at Smart Mouth. We're all in for candidates. And that will be a blast to have the minute at the hot mic to hear from people running. And speaking of running, the, the, the maid is knocking on my door. Uh, let's wrap up the show. Thank you, everybody. It's been a lot of fun broadcasting from Hampton Roads. We're so pleased to be here with you. We are going to say, hey, support our show, become a patron. Let's not forget about us and our work. It's really important to support us. We appreciate you for doing that. And also tune in next week. We have a great lineup on for Friday. As soon as we're done here, we'll be working on the show for next week. And follow us on social media and let's have some fun. We're going getting loud for Virginia Beach. Let's run credits and we have a two minute after chat.